Um, that's just the way we get when we have early release. So the first thing I want to make sure you guys have is what if I'm asking you to write the equation either in vertex form or what if I ask you to write the equation in standard form and I'm, given, I'm giving you the vertex and a point. So there's two ways, two different formulas that we've talked about. Vertex form, standard form. Is that right, follow me? OK. So if I ask you to write the equation of a parabola and I give you the vertex and the point, we need to go back and think again, what does the vertex and a point, what do those things represent? So the vertex, we use some different, we use some letters to represent the vertex. Does anybody want to raise their hand? And actually, no, let's just pick. Sarah, what, did we use, what letters do we use to represent the vertex? In the formula, what do we use to represent the vertex? H and K. So if I'm telling you, here is the point, Brian, that represents the vertex, would it make sense for me to say then that's an H and that's K? Yeah. Yes, right? Now, like we, I'm trying to tie together what I did up there. Now, if we have a coordinate point, those represent any, va any point that's on the, on the graph. So those can be represented by X and Y. Yes? Those are just a coordinate point. That's just a point, x and y. We plug them in. So if you guys go ahead and take a look at this, um, which equation would be the best for me to pl that I have all my information in for? Vertex form, right? So let's plug in the information that we have. We know what y. We know an example of y. That's negative 2. We do not have anything for a, so I'm going to leave a out there. Then I have an x, which is 4. I have an h, which is going to be minus 3 squared, and then I have a k, which is going to be plus 4. Did everybody see what I did? I just plugged the values in. Now, all I simply need to do is find the value of a. So in this case, again, follow the order of operations. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I'll write this as negative 2 equals a plus 4, because a times 1 is just a, right? Then I subtract 4. And I get negative 6 equals a. So now we know what the value of a is. It's negative 6. So to rewrite this back in there, we want to keep the x and the y open because the equation represents infinite many points that lie in the graph. So my equation in vertex form is y equals negative 6 x minus h plus k. So that would be my equation in vertex form squared, right? Now, what if I said, I don't want it in vertex form. I want it in standard form. Well, you still have to do all this information. But once you have any equation in vertex form, to put it in standard form, all we simply need to do is now just expand it. So hopefully you guys remember that x minus 3, if you guys remember, um, let's just do this. x squared is x times x, right? So x minus 3 squared is x minus 3 times x minus 3. Do you remember our focus lesson where we multiplied using FOIL or the box method? Yes? I'll let you guys do that work on your own. I'll do this in my head. This becomes x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 4. Then I have to distribute this negative 6. Because now I'm multiplying a monomial times a trinomial. So I'm going to use distributive property. So y equals negative 6x squared plus 36x minus 54 plus 4. My final equation is y equals negative 6x squared plus 36x minus 50. Standard form, vertex form. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? Yeah. 